Shere, visitor. You are about to embark on a journey of discovery through the rich and fascinating history of classical Greece. You'll become fully immersed in the painstakingly detailed world built for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which you are free to explore at your own pace, without any danger or time pressure. For a directed experience, take one of the many guided tours curated by prominent historians and archaeologists. Along the way, exchange words with some of Greece's most famous historical persons. The classical Greece you are about to explore is at the peak of its glory. This period is synonymous with grand accomplishments of the physical and the mental. Architectural marvels which still stand today dot its landscape, while towering achievements in philosophy, political systems and art still influence our modern society in profound ways. We hope you become engrossed in the dazzling riches of ancient Greece and welcome you to your visit. Greetings, Wanderer, and welcome to the Acropolis, the shining jewel of Athens. My name is Aspasia. Though I am not originally from Athens, I have climbed to the top of its social ladder using my wit and intellect. I've even earned the love of Pericles, one of the most powerful men in the city. The mind truly is a beautiful thing. Personally, I think the Acropolis is one of, if not the, greatest place in all of Greece. Though, considering it was the project of my partner, Pericles, I may be a touch biased. The Acropolis of Athens is a bastion of art and culture worthy of the gods themselves. Within this citadel, you will find many important sacred buildings, as well as some of the most magnificent art in all of Greece. You are in for a very enlightening visit. When you're done, come find me, and we can discuss the things you have seen. Farewell for now. The Acropolis has gone through many changes in its long history. It began as a simple rock, was settled as early as the Neolithic period, and then became a fortress in the Mycenaean period. Stone buildings started appearing in the 7th century BCE, but the famous structures whose ruins remain visible today date mainly from a period of construction in the 5th century BCE. The location of the Acropolis is closely tied with Athens' foundation myth. Supposedly, it was the site where Athena and Poseidon competed for the city's patronage. This connection gave the Acropolis a sacred aura, and it was considered the religious heart of the city. The Temple of Athena Nike was built on the remains of old fortifications from the Mycenaean era. Worship at the temple can be traced back to the 6th century BCE, but the building itself was destroyed during the Greco-Persian Wars a century later. It was rebuilt during the Peloponnesian War. Given that the name Athena Nike roughly means Athena of Victory, it was likely constructed in the hopes that Athens would win the war. Unusually, the temple depicts historical scenes of battles against the Persians instead of the more mythologically inclined art of other Greek buildings. The temple's priestess was chosen randomly among the Athenians and received a salary of 50 drachmae annually, along with skins and trophies from sacrificed animals.
The Acropolis was built up over a long period, due in no small part to its partial destruction during the Greco-Persian Wars. It was in the 5th century BCE, though, that the Acropolis received its most significant improvements. This period was an extremely prosperous time for Athens, both financially and culturally. With a booming economy bolstered by trade and the Lavrion silver mines, Pericles, the leader of Athens, financed a huge project to rebuild the citadel. He enlisted the help of renowned artists, like the sculptor Phidias, as well as the architects Ictinos and Callicrates. Together, they erected buildings like the Parthenon and the Propylia Gateway. Pericles' goal was to make the Acropolis into a glorious monument to the gods and to mortal Athenians. Behind the Propylia was the giant bronze statue of Athena Promachos, or Athena who fights on the front lines. That name was reflected in the spear and shield the statue held in its hands. It was erected in the mid-5th century BCE by the artist... According to an inscription, it took nine years to make and cost almost half a million drachmae. At approximately 10 meters tall, the statue was apparently so large that Pausanias claimed its helmet and spear tip could be seen from the sea near Cape Sunion, 60 kilometers away. The ornamentation on the statue's shield was engraved by the metalsmith, Mies. The Erephoroi were young girls between the ages of 7 and 11 who were in charge of special rights. A list of four girls was drafted by the Assembly of Citizens, from which the High Magistrate, the Archon Basileus, chose two to serve as Erephoroi for the year. The girls lived in a house on the Acropolis. They were in charge of carrying sacred objects and weaving the peplos of Athena. The peplos was a sacred robe offered to Athena during Panathenea, a festival held in her honor.
επεσέβουση. Ποιος ο υπέτειος. The Erechtheion was an atypical temple. It was dedicated not only to Athena Pelias, but also to Kekrops, the mythical founder of Athens, his son Erechtheos, and even Poseidon, the sea god who challenged Athena for possession of the city. The eastern part housed a statue dedicated to Athena, while the western section jointly belonged to Poseidon and Erechtheos. Meanwhile, King Kekrop's grave was believed to be under the caryatid porch. Under the temple was a crypt that was said to contain the sacred snakes of Athena. The snakes may have had a sweet tooth because the priestesses of Athena allegedly fed them honey cakes. The Parthenon is one of the most well-known buildings in the world and an enduring symbol of ancient Greek civilization. While it is located on the Acropolis, the building is not a traditional temple. It was built by the sculptor Phidias and the architects Callicrates and Ictinus as a great monument to the glory of the city of Athens. That glory is evident in its many carvings. One of the most carved monuments in Greek architecture, the Parthenon's decorations depict several mythological scenes. These include the birth of Athena, her fight against Poseidon for the patronage of Athens, the gods' battle with the giants, and the procession of the great Panathenaea. The Parthenon's inner chamber, or cella, contained a massive statue of Athena that was considered to be one of the sculptor Phidias's greatest masterpieces. The statue was chryselephantine, a combination of gold and ivory. To justify the steep cost of its construction, Pericles told Athenians that the statue was a gold reserve which could be disassembled in times of economic distress. The cella also allegedly contained a pool whose main purpose was to control the room's humidity, which helped preserve the statue's ivory.
Athens' treasury was located in the Parthenon, where it was believed to be protected by Athena herself. The treasury contained objects of great value, acquired from different conquests, as well as a mass of minted silver coins and various offerings to Athena. Pericles also decided to move the entirety of the Delian League's treasure to the Parthenon in 454 BCE. This was a great testament to Athens' power over the rest of Greece. The riches were divided into two parts, the Demosia, which belonged to the city, and the Hiera Cremita, which was dedicated to the goddess and only used for religious purposes. And what did you think of the Acropolis? It truly is quite something, isn't it? A sacred sanctuary and an architectural marvel, all in one. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You're confident enough for a test? Very well. Let us see how much you know. Which two gods competed for Athens' patronage? Correct. It was Poseidon and Athena who fought for Athens' patronage. As for who won, the answer is in the city's name. On to the next question. Who sculpted the statue of Athena in the Parthenon? Correct. The renowned sculptor Phidias made the statue, which was considered one of his masterpieces. And now, the final question. Which king's tomb was believed to be under the Caryatid porch? That is correct. Cecrops was the mythological first king of Athens, and his tomb was said to be under the Erechtheion. It seems you know much about this place. Well done, Wanderer. Very well. On to the next tour.
stupid? You there. You have a kind soul. Help an old man buy his next meal. Your soul also seems kind. I am grateful and humbled, stranger. Tell me, what do they call you? I'm Cassandra. And you? Just a simple beggar. I sailed from Persia to see the beauty of the Greek world. I can do many things, Persian, but I can't restore sight. Nor would I want you to. My blindness is a burden that the gods have given me to carry, and I will. Then what? Be my eyes. When I was a boy, an Athenian told me the most beautiful tales of your lands. I would love to hear them again. Would you go see the places I never was able to, and return to tell me the tale of your adventures? I'm not much of a storyteller, but I will be your eyes. I knew I sensed kindness in you. You've made this old Persian happy again. Don't thank me yet. What places do you wish you could have seen? Ah. My favorite tales were always of the Acrocorinth. The statues of Zeus in Athena, the perch of the armored bird in Arcadia, and of course, the mysterious mound Taigeto. So, tell me what you know about the statue of Zeus. Its great boat stood ready to punish the Kefalonians below. Or so I was told. I've seen Kefalonia from the statue of Zeus. Tell me, is it still a place of great beauty? Its people are the happiest in all the Greek world. They sing and dance into the night with full bellies and full hearts. But is it how it was described to me at all? The tales go that its lands are among the world's most beautiful, and its people among the most pitiful. Okay, I've told you what I remember. Now tell me about yourself. What's a Persian doing here? Persia and the Greek world are doomed to be opposites. In times of prosperity here, Persians always seem to suffer. And when you're at war with yourselves... Persians know peace? Indeed. My people prospered after King Xerxes was murdered. All except for me. A man tried to kill me with poison, which is how I lost my sight. I fled and arrived here. So there is a price on your head. Now I'm interested. There was, though there isn't any more. Now then, tell me another tale, and I'll tell you more of my past. There are many statues to Athena. Which one do you mean? In my mind, there is only one. Her story always began. As we rounded the hilltops, we could see Athens bustling below us, and Athena above, matching our gaze. You'll be glad to know, I've been to the statue of Athena at the Acropolis. Ah, if only I could have been there to feel her presence. Would you describe her to me? If Athens is a city of statues, then Athena is their guardian. She stands high above everything, on guard over the city. Yes, not just standing tall to protect Athens, but to serve as a reminder of the suffering those poor people endured during the invasion. Your turn to tell me something. You said a man tried to kill you. The man who rose up to kill the tyrant Xerxes was named Darius. He was of a new creed of killers, unlike any Persia had known. He was also the man hired to kill me. A killer of kings? Hired to kill a simple blind man? Why? I have your interest, do I? Tell another tale, and I will too. The Acrocorins? Don't tell me. It's in Corinthia. Smart guess. It is the most renowned temple to Aphrodite, your goddess of all life's most pleasurable trivialities. I've traveled to the Acrocorinth. From there, I could see all of Corinthia. Ah, I can only wonder at what the worshippers of Aphrodite do to pay her tribute. 
The Atera keep the spirit of Aphrodite alive, usually well into the night. Exactly as your goddess deserves. When I was younger, I'd lie awake dreaming of what it would be like to go worship, of course. Now that's out of the way. You owe me a tale. You said the king killer Darius was hired to kill you too. He was. By my brother. Your brother? None of this is making any sense, old man. I trust you. So I will tell you. My brother and I are the last living sons of King Xerxes. Impossible! That would make you a king. I was. My name was Artaxerxes. I guided Persia through a time of peace. But my brother walked to the throne and plotted my death. Now, I hide here. Exiled. Living the life of a simple beggar. I will tell you more. But first... Yes, yes. A tale for a tale. You did say Mount Tayetos, didn't you? You sound like you know that place. I have heard tales of its appetites. They say the mountain feeds on the suffering of Spartans, so the people there offer their own children to the mountain god for sacrifice. That's... that's not exactly right. I returned to Mount Tayetos. Returned? Tell me. Did you meet the mountain god who devours Spartan children? The mountain is just a mountain like any other. What makes Tayetos a place of suffering is the people there. That is true of all the world's worst places. When I was a child... I could tell from the moment I met you that you carried the burden of suffering. Let it stay in the past. Now you tell me, King Artaxerxes. How can I believe your story? You don't exactly look like royalty. <laughs> well, that's the point. I am hiding. Show me proof. I could. You see, I knew a man named Themistocles. The Athenian general. I heard stories about him being ostracized from Athens. All the petty politics. He came to Persia to me, looking for refuge. I was king. But only a boy. He spent his days learning Persian and telling me stories of his home. Places like the Acrocorinth, Mount Taigetos. The places you wished you could see. I loved the tales and loved Themistocles like a father. He was kinder to me than Xerxes ever was. Tell me one last tale and I'll tell you why he hid his treasure. What do you remember about this armored bird in Arcadia? There's a beast made of armor jutting out from the mountainside overlooking Lake Stymphalos and the undulating fields stretching like waves on a golden sea all across Arcadia. I'll be back with stories to tell. As soon as you've seen one location, please return. A papyrus? Says it was written by Themistocles, the Athenian general. A note, written by Themistocles. Who knew the great general was also a poet? This papyrus is so old. Could this be writing by Themistocles? Ah, I could hear your footsteps. Welcome back. If you'd like to hear about the bird, I could describe it to you. Nothing would make me happier. It's a majestic statue, built from the blades of fallen soldiers. It's so high above Stymphalos and the golden fields below. Up there, I could forget there was a war. So it is as it was told to me. The bird commemorates Heraclius' fight against chaos, built on a place of calm. Hopefully, one draws out the best in the other. So... I've been to the five places that Mr. Cleese told you about in his tales. For that, my soul will be eternally grateful. As for my tale, Themistocles died peacefully in Persia, as one of us. I promise him I'd see the places he told me about. His stories will live on in me. And now you. And what of your story? I let the people believe 
Dario succeeded in killing me, so I could escape. Oh, Xerxes, there's something else you should know. Yes? My grandfather was Leonidas of Sparta. That means... Your father, King Xerxes, killed my grandfather. Then you are bound by blood to avenge him. Arshak Xerxes, false king! This Mythios led me right to you! Time to finish what I started! Cassandra, please! Stand behind me. Artaxerxes, are you hurt? Despite being bound by honor to avenge Leonidas, you saved me. Thank you. I had no choice. That man wanted you dead. Must have been another one of your executioners. It was. If he doesn't return to Persia, my brother will send another. Then another. It's time this old man accepts his fate. You're a brave man, Artaxerxes. A trade I learned from Themistocles. Now, as for you, I owe you payment. Well, I did save your life. And I went on an adventure for you, your highness. You did? Though much of what you said is not how I remember Themistocles telling it. Things change. Ah, we approve of that, aren't we? Now, for Themistocles' treasure, find the tomb in Salamis where he made his triumphant stand against my father's navy. That's where your reward awaits.